All right. So, um, one of my actually favorite topics, which is composite materials. So this is lecture 27, the missing lecture 27 for composite materials. And I'm going to introduce a, a concept um, today that you've probably seen in your circuits classes, but we're going to talk about it from a mechanical engineering perspective uh, today. And also we're going to use this concept when we go into viscoelasticity in Section 3. So hopefully um, this will be a beneficial um, idea uh, to start considering uh, mechanical systems as different spring uh, and dash pot systems. But today we're only going to talk about what I call springs representing composite behavior. Alright, so let's just take, say, um, a blood vessel graft. All right, and let's say this tube looks like this, and maybe this tube's really, really flexible, and we want to put some. Um, it, it's really great at attracting cells or, or pre preventing platelets from sticking to the surface, but you know it, it's pretty weak mechanically. So we're going to surround it by another material here, right? Which uh, isn't going inter to interface with the blood flow, but it's going to kind of provide um, better mechanical strength, but now we need to interface here with the muscle on the back side, and so we're going to put another coating around the outside, a third coating, to get kind of those beneficial material properties in terms of interaction with the with the um, surrounding tissue. But now all of a sudden we've got this multi coating, and, and there's three different layers. We've got layer one, layer two, and layer three. And how is this material going to behave? And how could we necessarily solve that? And this all brings us into this composite idea. right? And these are very popular materials in these days, and especially in biomedicine, because a lot of times we need certain material properties in certain locations and different material properties in different locations. And combined, we need this all to operate underneath some mechanical function. And so this uh, brings us into composite mechanics. And it just so turns out it's actually not all that difficult to model. All right, so if we take this composite material and we say, well, we're going to compress it, one of the things we can convert this into is we say, okay, well, here's our compression. All right, what is happening inside this material uh, in terms of how it's resisting this compression. And we can say, well, the outer lining has some resistance to that compression. This is our middle layer, has some resistance to that compression. And maybe this is my inner layer. And so I can set up a system where I have outer layer, middle layer, inner layer. Basically, this is just three springs in parallel. Pair. Oops. All right, three strings in parallel. In the same way, let's say I have a hip implant, or not a hip implant, a knee implant, right? And so I have some layer here of some plastic, which is going to be loaded and then supported underneath by some metal. And then maybe there's some coating down here on the bottom uh, to interface with the bone. So I have some other plastic again, some different type of plastic. And now all of a sudden I have a system where I have, oops, a spring, a spring, and a spring where I have plastic one, plastic two, plastic three. And how do these systems behave? And the answer is um, mechanical engineers are exactly opposite of electrical engineers. They behave inverse to 
traditional electrical circuits. Squeeze my eye back in there. Ah, that. All right. In, in the sense of um, basically, when we have them set up in parallel, these moduli, for the most part, add. Although we're going to put a qualifier on that here in a second. And here we would end up with some composite moduli that's going to be some relationship of E1, E2, and E3. So this is going to be your, what typically looks like a parallel electrical circuit, and this is going to be basically what we would call normally a springs in, uh, or a electrical circuit in a series. So this is springs in series. All right. And these things are relatively easy to set up when we identify them. We can even have complex systems where I have some things in series that are hooked up in parallel to other things. Right, and this whole system being compressed. Right, so, and your homework problem actually kind of this year follows kind of that. So you have to set it up where some things are in series and some things are in compression. Basically, you solve this arm first, and then you can turn in this arm next. And you can turn that into something that looks like this. And now will, this can be turned into, finally, a composite that looks like that. Right? And we can get what we would call our composite modulus. Right? All right. So what's the qualifier on it at the end? Well, the issue is, is that if it's, a modulus and compo or a composite modulus we can call EC for a um, parallel system. All right, it's going to be equal. Um, I'll write out the, the the solution here. All right. Um, well, I'll give you the answer first, then I'll I'll show you the solution. Okay, it's going to be equal to the modulus of component 1 times the volume of component 1 plus the modulus of component 2 times the volume ratio for component 2 and so on. All right. So let me um, show the derivation of it so that you can understand what these volume components are or volume fractions is what we sometimes call them. All right. And it, it basically comes down to this. All right. If I have a parallel system looks like this, and I add some force to it, all right, and we can call this 1 and this 2. The overall total force in the system is going to be equal to some force in 1 plus some force in 2, right? So basically I'm pulling on this and there's going to be some resistance in 1 and some resistance in 2 and we can call those two things forces, or we can convert this over to the stress-strain domain and say that the stress over my total area um, let me, I, oops All right. since um, stress equals force over area we can turn this into basically stress over area is going to be equal to the stress in 1 over the area of 1 plus the stress in 2 over the area of 2 times the area of 2. All right. And then since in elastic deformation, stress is going to be equal to uh, the modulus times strain, we can come in here and say that the modulus of the total, all right, uh, times the strain times the area of the total is going to be equal to the modulus of 1 and the strain in 1 and the area of 1 
uh, plus the modulus of the second one, the strain in the second one, and the area of the second one. Well, uh, you can't have off, you can't have different strains in one and strains in two, right? If this thing's being stretched out, say 10%. That basically means that this one has to move 10% and this one has to move 10%. Otherwise, you're, you start to get a material that's deforming sort of abnormally like that, right? If it's truly a composite, both different layers are going to have the same deformation in them, all right? And that deformation is actually going to be the same as the deformation of the overall. So we can say that the overall deformation is going to be equal to the deformation in part one and the deformation in, in part two. Alright, so with that in there, um, we can do this. Okay, and pull that. I don't know why I just uh, I made that ridiculous. I can I can pull this out. Right, and now it's apparent that these that that term basically drops. And if we divide through, we can say that E is equal to E one a1 over a plus e2 a2 over a all right and this is the vo the area of the total here A1 is the area devoted to, or area of, of, of component 1. A2 is the area of component 2. All right, and so basically all this is is how much of the material, how much of the composite material is part 1 and how much of the composite material is component 2 or percentage of the material that is component one percentage of material that is component two. And so the mo overall moduli for things in, s in, in series so uh, the composite moduli for, I'm sorry, I said series for things in parallel, parallel is just going to be equal to E1 times what we call in V1 or the volume fraction percentage of the material that is component 1 plus E2 times what we call the volume fraction of 2 or the percentage of the material that is component 2. All right, so they simply add, and in order to add them correctly, you just need to know what part of the material is component one and what part of the material is component two. So these will always be numbers, V1 and V2 will always be numbers that are between zero and one, or zero percent and a hundred percent. All right. Uh, and that will basically uh, solve that out in the same way, all right, and I want to introduce uh, if we do a composite material based on springs in parallel. Ah, said parallel. Apparently, I am um, an electrical engineer today. I'm not getting my systems uh, inverted like a true mechanical engineer. All right, so springs in series. And here we can say, let's say we have 
some spongy material on some metal. All right, what is going to be its response? Well, it's going to be the sponge getting compressed, this metal being compressed, and then whatever this is again here at the end. All right, and so what you can see here is that, yeah, I mean, if I take a sponge and I put it on a hard table, right, I can compress the sponge quite a bit before the table ever gets deformed. So we don't necessarily need to have the same strain in component one. We can say this one, two, and three. So the strain in component one and the strain in component two and the strain in component three, they're, they're not necessarily all equal this time. But what about the stress? Well, the answer is it, stress is defined by force over area and it doesn't matter if I'm really compressing this thing from both sides both of these materials they may experience different deformations but they all experience the exact same stress All right, and that's going to be equal to the overall stress applied to the material. So I can solve it out exactly the same way I did above and what ends up happening is we um, start with some relationship, right? We will just start with the strain relationship um, here. So we can say the length of the total material is going to be equal to some sum of all our different components. All right. If I convert this over into strain, since strain is equal to change in L over L, I end up with some strain in, in the overall material. It's going to be equal to component one, I'm just going to do two components, times the length of that component plus component the strain in component two times the length of that component. So basically how much strain in, happens in this length plus how much strain happens at this length is going to be the overall strain in the material. If I just go through and solve this out already, I can get the strain is going to be equal to the strain of one times L1 over L2, uh, L total plus the strain of L2 over L. Guess what we've got here? Those are volume fractions. The same way area was a volume fraction, uh, scaled up to volume, length is the same way. So what percentage of the length is a given, uh, a given part of the total length? Well, that's just a volume fraction, just as before. And so we can write this as the strain in the total is equal to the strain in part one for the volume fraction of one plus the strain in part two times the volume fraction of two. Uh, and since, again, stress equals the modulus times strain, when we solve this out, we get the stress over some uh, modulus of the composite is going to be equal to the stress times the volume fraction of one over the modulus of part one plus some stress in two times the volume fraction in two divided by some modulus of two. But again, as we said above, the stress is the same in all these different areas. So again, we can factor, oops, we can factor stress out and divide, and this simplifies down to our solution for a composite in series is equal to the volume fraction of 1 over E1 plus the volume fraction of 2 over E2. And again, you can com solve this out to V2 over uh, or V3 over E3 plus V4 over E4. It doesn't matter uh, how far out it goes as long as it's just one simple system. Right? So the last little bit on this is uh, solving complex systems. As I will frequently ask you to do on tests or on homeworks. All right, so I'm just going to draw 
in a relatively complex one. Okay, so how do you solve these things down? Well, you just end up solving each one down. So this this one can uh, be reduced down. I'll I'll draw in red. So I, basically, you start shrinking your components um, down. So this one by solving some spring in um, parallel, I can get some E composite here for parallel for this co parallel component. Right, this one is just springs in series, so I can get some composite here for series. And I can get this one reduced down, some composite in series. And once I get those reduced down to single springs, then these five springs, this one, this one, this series, this one, and this series, can all be collapsed down, right, to some other composite to represent this whole system. And then I can finally combine this composite, this composite, and this whole system composite to get the composite for the whole. All right, so it's just like solving electrical circuits where you can re reduce large conglomerations of resistors down into what we would call a composite resistor. The exact same thing works in mechanical spring uh, systems. You just, uh, are, you're inverted over what you're commonly used to from circuits, okay? So for springs in series, it's the one over equation, and for springs in parallel, uh, they, they add, and it's based upon our various volume fractions.